Well, my duperos y duperas, we got these brand new kits that are sexy as hell. Uh, the Seabay looks like it's going to be resolved soon, and all Uni fans want to know, are we going to get more players from the Supporter Shield winners in 2020? Well, there was an interesting article put out by MLS Italia. We're going to talk about it today because there's really interesting stuff that we need to talk about. And don't go anywhere, guys, and let's get this started. And that is right, welcome everyone to Do By The River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union, brought to you by Philly Sports Network. Before we move forward, ladies and gentlemen, please do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button for notifications, as well as sharing this video and this channel, help your favorite parcero grow. And guys, do not forget, podcast edition of Dupe by the River is every Tuesday. We are now doing it live. It'll be on my YouTube channel here, uh, so stay tuned every Tuesday at 7.30. And if you want to listen to it, wherever you stream podcasts, Find it on Philly Sports Network at PSN Radio. We, we stream all the Philly Sports Network podcasts there, including Duke by the River. So make sure you subscribe and check out every week for all of the Duke by the Rivers on PSN Radio. That is right, guys. Today, it is about the Philadelphia Union and looking forward now. So we've been teased for a long time about these new kits. They're finally here. They're beautiful as expected. Um, the CBA, it, it's been going back and forth. It's been pretty messy. But as the, the reports that, that are coming out more and more, it, so, it seems like we're going to get back to playing soccer on schedule in 2021. But a lot of Union fans want to know, what are the Union doing? Because obviously we had the two biggest sales in our franchise's history. We sold Mark McKenzie. We sold we sold Brandon Aronson, and you know Cincinnati is stealing all headlines in the MLS right now. They bought a 24 year old uh, Brazilian youth product. Uh, I forget his name, but he's apparently he's got a lot of skill. He's a striker, and of course they brought back over BT Martinez from from guitar uh, from Saudi Arabia. After Atlanta United sold him off, and now he's coming back to the MLS. So Union fans, being Union fans, uh, are freaking out, which I get it. Like, I, I, we're not making much sales, and, you know, we want to win a cup. I 100% agree with you there. But there was a very interesting article that was put out by MLS Italia. I guess um, they interviewed Ernst Tanner, and uh, they asked him some, some in questions that a lot of us Union fans kind of wanted to know, and I kind of want to talk about it. And there were some really interesting things that might, you know, give us hints of what the Union are probably doing or not doing the remainder of the offseason. But first off, in the article, uh, we learned a little bit about the mindset of Ernst Tanner. We all know that Ernst really puts uh, an emphasis on the youth but we all know he doesn't really care for this this American culture of drafts which I agree with him I think drafts are pretty dumb it's a great way for colleges to make money of course off these athletes but it is what it is we can make a whole other episode on the the debt the the issues with the college system and college athletics here in America but fact of the matter is uh, it, it's crazy the way he puts it that you know, when he goes down to those draft combines and he looks at all the players that are there and he just thinks like, are these players better than some of the players that are in our youth academies? And for most, most of the players in our youth academy are better than those players, <laughs> flat out. And he, that's the reason why he keeps selling off these draft picks. And that's the reason why kind of, you know, the MLS draft is kind of dying off. I don't know if it'll ever go away completely because think about it. If you're an expansion club, you know, you've seen the past couple of years, um, Nashville and uh, Cincinnati have used the draft to their best abilities because they need players to fill in the roster. But the fact of the matter is the college system is really not where you go to become a, a soccer star, right? If you're that good, you're going to be spotted out as, as a youngster, just like in soccer worldwide. You get placed in the youth academy, and the team develops you, and hopefully you can help the team out eventually. And that's going to be continu the continuous plan of the Philadelphia Union going forward. However, the last part of this interview was very, very interesting. So they asked him the question, because obviously they are an Italian-based, uh, I guess, website or whatever this is, whatever this website is. Um, they asked him if he if he's thinking about a DP or if he's thought about an Italian DP for the Philadelphia Union. And apparently, he was looking at some under twenty three uh, products from Juventus, and it, it, apparently, it just didn't go through. Um, it, it's crazy. He he doesn't really believe in 
buying these big stars simply because it doesn't work out in the dressing room. You know, a lot of these players, and it's very true, a lot of these players don't even make a million dollars a year. A lot of them make 70K to 800K, right? And uh, I think like three players on the union make about a million dollars. Um, and so when you're talking about the mindset, like it's hard for a player who's grinding every day and seeing, you know, this this $10 million player walk in the dressing room, it, that, that mindset kind of that does change. So I agree with that. And But however, the key to that as well was Ernst and the union more than likely will not be bringing in or probably, no, actually, I shouldn't say more likely. They're not bringing in a DP for the 2021 season. Now, look, my honest opinion, guys, I love the, the model that the Union have built. Building these kids up, eventually helping us out down the line, and then we can sell them off. Winning championships and selling off these players is a dream. I, I'm 100% I'm down for this. However, when I think about the Union going into 2021, we are close. We are this close to an MLS Cup, ladies and gentlemen. We like I don't I don't know what would have happened if we would have beaten New England on that 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 cold night in October. I don't know what would have happened, but what I do know is that okay, you just sold Mark, you just sold Brendan. The center back position is completely fine, and they still haven't bought the the replacement for Mark yet, which is going to be a lot more cheaper. Um, but I do think that this team is still a deadly goal scorer away from winning an MLS Cup. I love Casper Shiboko. I love Sergio Santos Gomes. I love Corey Burke. But those guys are not putting fear in opposing back lines. I'm sorry. Casper Shiboko and Sergio Santos have disappeared at times in important moments. And I'm thinking about that, um, that, that, uh, the MLS Cup playoff loss against New England. Where were those guys when we needed a goal? So I think that the Union roster setup right now is fine. It is fine. I still think that this is a team that could still compete within the Eastern Conference, maybe make a run, but I don't think that this roster is good enough to win it all. And again, I just think that we need that, that we need that Joseph Martinez, we need that Lucas Elarayan, we need that Raul Rudiaz, someone that's going to instill fear in back lines. When you need a goal, we can look at X player, and we know we're going to get that goal. I don't think we have that on this roster yet. And it, replace, replace, uh, replacing Brendan with his little brother Paxson is fine as well. I, I'm not really expecting much. I think that Font is going to become instill the, the starter now. At the 10 roll, we'll have Jamiro Montero. I can see those guys switching back and forth as well. And then Paxson later on in the season will start getting some play. From what I'm hearing, and actually Ernst talked about it in the interview, Paxton is looking more like a 10 than what, what, uh, what Brandon Aronson is. Brandon Aronson is a box-to-box -box midfielder. Uh, he's active on the high press, whereas Paxton can create a little bit more, but also can score too. So the rumors are he's supposed to be better than Brandon Aronson once he's fully developed. This is still, I think, a 17-year-old kid. But, yeah, I mean, I just think that this team is just that deadly piece away. However, you know, it, it's just fun. I, I know how we work here in Philly. Union fans, Eagles, Sixers, Phillies, Flyers, we're all the same. We're, we all panic when we don't need to panic. And the fact of the matter is, if you're a Union fan panicking because you're seeing Cincinnati spend money, stop. Just don't do that to yourself. You're literally hurting yourself. Because the fact of the matter is, the Union have been taking this, this type of model over the past two to three seasons, and every single year, the Union have gotten better. I would rather take our situation that we have here in Philly than take what they have over in Cincinnati. Cincinnati's been a joke since they've come into the MLS. We were promised the, the big the big crowds, winning soccer, champagne soccer in the Midwest, right? Well, they've been the joke of the MLS the past few years. So I'm not worried about the Union not spending money. Again, would I like a, a, that, that deadly goal score? 120%. But still, this roster is still a pretty good roster in the MLS. And who knows? You know, Casper, Sergio can take that next step in their game. And maybe we don't need this deadly goal, goal scorer that I'm talking about. But just looking at it on paper, everything seems fine to me. But again, when we get into those situations, who's going to score that goal? Who's going to score the goal? That's really it. But definitely, guys, if you haven't already, definitely read that article. It is very telling. Uh, it's interesting what they do say. Uh, and they do one interesting question. They did ask him, would he ever, would, would Ernst ever think about creating a partnership in Europe? Kind of like what FC Dallas has with Bayern München. 
And he he said that he doesn't agree with that. And I love that he thinks that. When you see when you seclude yourself to one club, then the negotiations can go wrong. And Ernst has proven that they don't need a partnership. We can sell with the best. Ernst got the most he could from Brennan and Mark. And the sky's the limit for some of these other players. Anthony Fontana's come. I think Anthony Fontana, if he plays the way he played last season, now he more likely will be a starter. He's probably going to get sold soon. We'll see how much, how well Paxson is and how long he will be here because the expectation is he's going to get sold off uh, soon as well. Don't sleep on Jack Elliott potentially getting sold too. Jakob Glezis could possibly be looking to go back to Europe. Kai Wagner as well. Jamiro Montero. So uh, these guys, if they get the job done, play winning soccer or football, whatever you want to call it, then the sky's the limit here for the Philadelphia. But guys, I, I know it's tough. I, I understand. I know we, we, I get it. We were, we're, we're close. Like this team is close to the MLS Cup, the trophy that we're all looking for. But we're not going to get the EPs here and we're just going to trust the kids. That's, that's, that is what it is. This could work. This could work. And who knows? We probably have that deadly goal, goal scorer uh, right here in our backyard. You know, little Johnny from Delco is probably the next lot on Ibrahimovic, and we don't know. <laughs> but we'll definitely give it, a, uh, give it a chance. So in the comments below, let's continue the conversation. Bent out, Union fans. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Union going forward in the offseason and the plans that Ernst has for our club. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much if you have watched up to this point. Don't for, do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button for notifications, as well as sharing this video and this channel help with here at to grow. And do not forget to check out Duke by the River Podcast Edition. Every Tuesday we are live here on my channel or definitely check it out wherever you listen to, to, to podcasts on PSN Radio. Make sure you subscribe to that. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I go by the name of Ed Parcero Philly, and I'm telling you guys to do bon. We'll talk to you soon.